my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be attempting a traditional southern recipe for pine rosin potatoes. What is pine rosin, you may say? And it is this. Isn't it beautiful? I feel like I'm a prospector. These beautiful crystals of pine rosin, also known as pine resin, is a byproduct of turpentine production. So this recipe comes from the south particularly because turpentine was made there. So pine trees were slashed and the sap was tapped. Then it was distilled to create turpentine. The waste product from the turpentine production was this, the beautiful rosin. So rosin is still used today on violin bows and also in baseball, but I'm going to use it today to make pine rosin potatoes. So back in the old days, you were able to go to the hardware store and get yourself a cast iron pot already filled with pine rosin ready to make your potatoes. So I picked up a kit online. I'll put the information down below if, in case you're interested. And it included everything I needed to make these potatoes, including the pot, the thermometer, and the tongs. Because once we make these potatoes, those things will only be used for this. They have to be designated for pine rosin potatoes because they're going to be coated in pine rosin. You can keep replenishing the rosin stores and just keep making rosin potatoes. Besides wanting to get my hands on some beautiful pine rosin, the reason why I wanted to make this recipe is that it's supposed to make the most beautiful, wonderful, baked, cooked potato ever. So after we put our potatoes in the pine rosin and they cook for about an hour, they float to the surface, we wrap them in paper, and the rosin hardens to make this hard shell on the outside. Apparently in the old days it was a way to preserve your potatoes, but it's supposed to make the best cooked potato ever. You crack open the shell and inside is the fluffiest, softest, most tender, delicious potato ever. So that's reason enough to do this today. So what I've done so far is I've taken my pot and I've emptied the two bags of pine rosin that came in the kit and then I've slowly brought it to a boil. Then I added the potatoes. I'm using smaller russet potatoes and then we're going to wait about 40 minutes to an hour for the potatoes to come up to the surface. And then we can wrap them in paper and then we can taste them. I can't wait! So apparently the chain Cracker Barrel used to sell pine rosin potatoes but there were some health concerns regarding cooking in rosin, so they stopped making them. But I did find one place in Decatur, Texas that still makes these potatoes, but I'm gonna make them myself. All right, so we're gonna come back to this in about an hour and have ourselves some spuds. Alrighty, so I'm back at my little makeshift outdoor kitchen and my potatoes are ready. They've been floating and they've been sitting here for an additional half an hour. I'm gonna and I wish you could smell this, the entire Backyard, I mean the entire backyard, is perfumed with pine. It smells amazing. You definitely have to do this outside. It is so aromatic and perfumey. It's incredible. You could not do this inside. The next step is, I've got some paper here, and we're going to grab our potatoes out of our vat. Isn't that amazing? Okay, we're going to take a potato out. Put it in the paper and wrap it up. Just like a little bundle. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look how stinking cute. It's like a little candy. Oh my gosh. Okay, another one. Now the reason why we put them on paper is that the resin is so sticky that it would ruin all of your dishes. So, like that, just little bundles, little parcels. I love this idea, it's so great. Let me know down in the comments below if you've ever had bras and potatoes before. I wanna hear from you. I love this. I love this so much. Such a great cookout idea. But I am getting resin everywhere. Can you hear my chickens in the background? <laughs> Last one. Okay, 
We're going to let these cool just a little bit until they harden. Alrighty, so now my potato has cooled enough so that the rosin is hard. I can't wait to taste this. It was so easy to put together and so much fun and it smelled amazing. This is like the perfect way to like do a little cookout potato. So apparently when the potatoes were cooked this way, they're coated in rosin and they could be stored for quite a while like this. A couple weeks I've read. So really smart way. Not only does it cook your potatoes nicely, but it's a way to preserve them as well. And they look so charming. I love it. Love it. <gasps> Next I'm gonna take butter. Slather in there, sprinkle some salt, freshly cracked pepper in my potatoes. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Look how fluffy that is. Alrighty. Yeah, I hear ya. I hear ya, Mr. Cardinal. I hear ya. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty. I know, it's pretty, pretty. It's a gorgeous day. Alright, it's the lucky boss. You know, in all the descriptions I read, they said it's gonna be the best baked potato we've ever had. It really is absolutely delicious. So tender and fluffy. In case you're wondering, it doesn't taste like pine, pitch, turpentine, rosin at all. It just tastes like beautifully rich, soft, buttery potato. Wonderful, outstanding, phenomenal, fantastic, just It's the best. It's so, so good. This potato is outstanding. You can't eat the skin because it's covered in rosin, but this potato is amazing. It's a baked potato, but it's just perfectly cooked. Fluffy, tender, not hard whatsoever. It's just, it's not dry. It's outstanding. I'm gonna have another one. Let's do a newspaper one. Use our knife cut into it. This is my trick for opening and displaying baked potatoes. You slice it down the length and then you squeeze the opposite ends. And then it gets all fluffy and gorgeous. Now, we am put some more butter. Salt. And pepper. Done, done, done. Look, you don't even have to fluff it. It's already fluffy. Ha! So good. Mm. So, so good. Perfectly, perfectly cooked baked potato. This is the, my new favorite way to cook potatoes. Absolutely wonderful. So if you're interested in making pine rosin potatoes, I will put the link down below to where I got this kit. If you live in the South, this might be easier for you to find. You might actually find it at your hardware store, maybe. Or ask your family about it. Maybe there is some tradition of making pine rosin potatoes and maybe there's an old rosin pot in somebody's garage. Dig it out. Make some rosin potatoes because they're amazing. Alrighty. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video. Subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Diddaloo. Take care. Bye. Emmy eats potatoes. Emmy eats potatoes. Emmy's gonna eat lots of potatoes.